this is the first session in the first unit of our series. In this session, we shall provide an introduction to disasters. We shall discuss the background concepts, meaning, and key issues related to disasters, as well as terminologies commonly used in disasters. We shall also look at the classification of disasters and the public health consequences of disasters. What does the term disaster mean to you? A disaster can be defined as a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a society causing widespread human, material, economic or environmental losses which exceed the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. A key issue to note here is that the disruption exceeds the ability of the affected community to cope and they often need external help. This definition is by the World Health Organization. We shall define other terms. What is an emergency? It is a state in which normal procedures are suspended and extraordinary measures are taken in order to avert a catastrophe. Often these two terms, emergency and disaster, are used interchangeably. But emergencies involve suspension of normal procedures, the normal way we've been doing things, so that we put in place emergency procedures to avert the possibility of occurrence of a catastrophe. Let us look at the terms, at other terms, hazard, risk, vulnerability, and capacity. What is a hazard? A hazard is a threatening event or potentially damaging incident. It hasn't yet occurred, but it is a potential source of a disaster. What is risk then? It is the probability of suffering damage to life, property, economic disruptions from a hazard for a given area and reference period. Risk is a term usually used in probability and it is the product of hazard and vulnerability. What is vulnerability then? Vulnerability refers to the susceptibility to physical or emotional injury following a disaster. It is the degree to which an area, a people, physical structures or economic assets are exposed to loss, injury or damage caused by the impact of a hazard. What is capacity? It refers to the resources available including human, material and other types of resources that will enable a community to cope with a threat or resist the impact of a hazard. What is then the relationship between these terms? Disaster risk can mathematically be given by the equation risk equals to hazard times vulnerability minus capacity. Disasters may be natural, they may be technological, that is human generated, and then there are those that are in between, also called hybrid disasters. Another way to classify disasters is based on the speed of onset. Disasters may be rapid onset or slow onset. Slow onset natural disasters could include drought and desertification, famine, deforestation, pests and plant diseases. Rapid onset natural disasters may include Climatic disasters like floods, windstorms, wildfires, and hailstorms, and geological disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic activity, and landslides. 
Technological disasters are often man-made. They result from activities by human beings or omissions by human beings. They include conflict, wars leading to refugees and internal displacement. These are often called complex emergencies. But technological disasters also include disasters like structure failure, building collapse, transportation crashes, and accidents both on water and on roads, and other types of accidents like chemical explosions, uh, factory explosions, and this type of accidents. Technological disasters also include military accidents, fire disasters, terrorism, and industrial accidents. Hybrid disasters. In some situations, it is difficult to classify a disaster on the basis of whether it is natural or technological. For instance, where do epidemics fall? We shall now look at the public health consequences of disasters. There are several consequences, and they include death, Injuries, loss of clean water, loss of shelter, loss of personal household goods, major population movements, loss of sanitation, loss of routine hygiene, disruption of solid waste management, public concern for safety that may include panic, increased pests and vectors, damage to healthcare systems, worsening of chronic illnesses like diabetes and hypertension, loss of electricity, toxic and hazardous exposures, loss of food supply, standing surface water. This is a pictorial presentation of some of the consequences of drought and famine. And this is an illustration of some of the effects of flash floods. This is an illustration of some of the effects of slow onset floods. This is an illustration of some of the effects of landslides. The Hyogo Framework for Disaster Management is an international framework that emphasizes the following at all levels, including operational levels. Establishment of subtle early warning systems. Capacity building. Emphasis on safety and resilience of communities reducing risk factors, and strengthening disaster preparedness at all levels. Pre-disaster definitions include preparedness, which implies actions that result in persons knowing what to do and how to respond after a disaster has occurred. Prevention, which means activities designed to provide permanent protection from disaster, which include engineering, and physical protective measures as well as legislation to control land use and urban planning. And then mitigation which refers to measures taken in advance of an event aimed at decreasing or eliminating its impact on society and in the environment. Post-disaster definitions include response, these are decisions and actions taken during and after a disaster, and they include immediate relief, rehabilitation, reconstruction. Recovery is another post-disaster term. It refers to activities that restore vital life support systems to normalize operating standards and long-term activities that return life to normal in the post-disaster phase. Other definitions, relief and rescue. This occurs in the time period immediately following the disaster. Exceptional measures are taken to save lives and care for survivors, as well as meet their basic needs. There is a distinction between rescue and relief. Rescue is mainly aimed at securing life, while relief is mainly meant to sustain life. Rehabilitation, on the other hand, 
is a process that occurs after the closure of the relief phase. There is no more dependency on uh, uh, support needed for basic needs. Basic needs have already been satisfied. It involves restoring mental and physical health and stability of a community. It involves instilling principles of sustainable livelihoods and empowering victims and survivors. It should lead to better development. Examples of rehabilitation include early recovery plans for internally di displaced persons, reforestation programs, post-recovery plans. The emphasis is on restoration of the original status before um, the disaster. Recovery examples include physical infrastructure repairs, enhancement of pre-disaster state, building resilience of communities, providing new structures and housing that will be able to withstand a similar disaster in future. There is an evolution in approach from response and relief to disaster risk reduction. A challenge to you, what mechanisms have you put in place to prevent disasters in your district? To reduce vulnerability to disasters in your district? To prepare for disasters in case they occurred in your district? All disasters are local. All disasters occur locally in a particular community. The earliest response to disasters often comes from the community itself. The capacity of the community res to respond to disasters should therefore be built. Thank you for listening to this presentation.